I have a riddle for especially people that I think like LB and maybe some others to you. But yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'll, I'll fill I'll I'll fill in some space when uh, you're done. Fill in all the space that you want, Death Wish. I've got a I've got a minute or two. I just need to make a note, so Okay. Uh if you got a minute or two uh I wrote it down, so many years ago in a small Indian village, a farmer had the misfortune of owing a large sum of money to a village money lender. The money lender, who was old and ugly, fancied the farmer's beautiful daughter, so he proposed a bargain. He said he would forgo the farmer's debt if he could marry his daughter. But the farmer and his daughter were horrified by the proposal, so the cunning money hoarder uh, and lender suggested that they let the providence decide the matter. He told them, oh, crap. <laughs> I thought you said you wrote it down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's that one. Actually, took it out, but come on, come on. Okay, so Yeah, the uh, sound went. Yeah, I know, because I've tapped out of the game. Don't worry. I'm taking a a larger screenshot okay. than what I can get in the game with this, hopefully. <laughs> Give me a second. Okay, so the farmer and his daughter were horrified by the proposal, so the claim money uh, Lander suggested that they let the providence of the matter. He told them that he would put a black pebble and a white pebble into an empty money bag. Then the girl would have to pick one pebble from the bag. Now imagine that you were standing in the field. What would you have done if you were the girl? If you had to advise her, what would you have told her? And uh, oh wait, you messed it up again. No, and I'll wait for uh, anybody's answer. Okay, I'll I'll start over. <laughs> Do it unless you get a really good interest rate. All right, let's go back to taking a look at this, um, which is clearly a map. There is the big structure there. Now, I was kind of like turning my head a little bit here because I didn't know if this actually looked like a picture of a cat for a minute. Um, I mean, is it cat? Is it act or is it tack? Could be any. But if that is...
Hold on, that's going the right. The the struts there are pointing backwards. So I did remember to push the record button. Thanks uh, for Furious. I did. Thank you very much. The reminder. I don't know if that's just like a just a representation or if that is actually to do with the orientation there. Um, it wouldn't make sense though to be the right orientation. feel like there are some um, there are some letters somewhere and potentially there is something we need to press but that would be kind of like on the far that's one that side and two potentially this side though we're looking at like this we kind of need to flip the map almost 90 degrees counterclockwise <laughs> uh, we have a record number of guesses. I've not got my uh, my my notepad with me actually. I've only got my work one in front of me. I have a separate notepad that I write all my arts and craft stuff in. Unfortunately, I don't <laughs> have it, and I don't remember what the guess was last time. Well. Uh, uh, I feel for you. That sounds like a shame. I want a bigger pitch. I want a bigger version of this map just to put at the side of me. Let me screen clip that. Windows key shift S. It's the one. You are right. <laughs> I knew what you were doing. That's my, old, my, I'm not being funny. That, that is my most used Windows key combination. I I use Snipping Tool like regularly every day. Uh, it's it's freaking fantastic. I mean, that's one of the best things they ever did. And then, of course, with Windows 10, hit it, and then it it, it has a notification that pops up if you have it set. Then you just click on it, and then it'll open it up in your default, like paint or 3D paint or whatever. And yeah, it's and a, awesome. a nice feature that they actually added. I don't, I don't think it's just a Windows 11 features, but it hasn't always been the case. But recently, they made a change. And I say recently, like within the last six months, where it now automatically saves your screen uh, grabs to your pictures folder. Yeah. So, because it used to be a case that if you took a screen grab and then you looked at another one, it would override, or overwrite what you just unlocked. Uh, what, yeah. What yeah. you just done. Whereas now, it actually keeps the history. So, that's pretty freaking awesome. Yeah, it was literally uh, like you hit print screen button, but it, that takes. Uh, a screenshot of everything. Yeah. Uh, and then if you hit it again, it replaces it. Same thing with, uh, you know, the snipping tool. Yep. So, yeah, it's, it's freaking awesome. To, uh, such a simple thing, and uh, I, I, I give a... Uh, Microsoft bonus points for that. Okay, so I think this is... I think the T is up there. So my... I need to lock my mouse. And back into my, I, I am aware of the screenshot thing in the game ascendance, but I just wanted like a screen clip up on the side of me so I can actually look at it and reference it. Um, 
And plus, when I do a screen grab like this, I can actually make it bigger. So, um, I'm walking across the front of it at the minute. And I think our reference points for this one, there are some like little triangle kind of, and some shapes where the paths kind of intersect. Like here, for instance, there is a triangle here. As I'm looking at this, there is a path that leads up to up there. Yeah. I want to take leave it this path. It could be this path. No worries, Pathfarious. There's a map on the side here. Very excited. So, yeah, Pathfarious, do your thing. And they're done the path. Hello. To have only just begun this journey of philosophy. The world may seem like a mystery that can never be solved. A great deal has been written since the days of the Seven Sages, but how much of it is truth and how much of it is idle speculation? Speculation. I've offended many by saying that most philosophy will, as the centuries pass, be discarded as foolishness and superstition. But it is a truth only philosophers fail to see. And yet we cannot abandon reason and conclude that we cannot know anything. Rather, we must accept that the journey towards understanding will be long. And our task is to build a foundation for those who will one day arrive at its destination. Okay, so I'm not actually convinced now that this is the right, this was the right building, the right area. Yeah, I remember going to that. The actual place is kind of like more of a in front and maybe crazy. How's it going crazy? Hope you well. Hope you had a good uh, Christmas. Uh oh, uh, a little bit of craps. Uh, GPU took a dump, so you can only play with with a run on a CPU. It was built in, you know, CPU. Yeah, okay. Yeah, graphics, yeah. yeah I'm I like, took it on turn. I took it on turn. So I need to go up to this one. Just, just, or build yourself another one. It's been way too long, like myself. You deserve it. This is the building. However, I've just fallen off the edge and now I have to go all the way around again. Yeah, the old self's back just while we play Talos because it's I'm running at a smaller resolution, so it just works better that way. Actually, I rotated my map, but of course, 
Solved. Excellent. One down. We did the C. We did the C. Yeah. I look. I was looking at my map because I've got it rotated on my thing, like the for the orientation that I can understand. And I was like, eh, I don't think that's right. It needs to be a C. And I get this game working. How do you mean? What do you mean, uh, crazy? How do I get this game working? I mean. I don't, well, I don't, I want, to sound, I don't want to sound like an through. asshole, but I opened up Steam and pressed play. That, that's exactly <laughs> what I was going to say. I was like, he just he just opened Steam and pressed play after he downloaded it. And then it worked. It's magic. I don't want to sound like an asshole, but yeah. <laughs> Nah, that's not an asshole, that's just factual. Okay, this one's interesting. Now, I don't know if this is on the outside of the puzzle here, or if this is inside, because where the, the letter is here, it seems to suggest it's inside the puzzle. Oh no, it's here. Okay. I'll be here 100% correct. Look at the puzzle. Was that the pre order bonus? <laughs> yeah, I, I tried to play it when it came out, but I had to figure out how to get it started. So, you know. It's the lab? Because it wasn't marked on my screen, was it? Uh, we're playing, uh... No, this one's the map. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Playing quick. Oh, yeah, I also watched that, um, protein video that you, uh, sent me last night as well, which was quite interesting. It's quite a good, um, watch to see, like, their whole behind-the-scenes sort of thing. How they've developed and partnered with the Volvo. Quite interesting actually to see like some information about Serious Sam because I've never really seen or played like, Serious Sam before, so I really know a lot about it. Me and uh, let a crap, let a crap out of it. Uh, all, all the versions. Come back for first. I do have another. Uh, another. Watch, uh, watch me. I, I do have another. Uh, uh, what you call it? Riddle. Yeah, but it's it's much shorter, much simpler as far as it's it's purely logic. Look at you walking around pushing buttons. Almost like I've done it before in another game. <laughs> Crazy. I don't know. I, I don't know how you understood what to do. It's, it's crazy, yeah. Alright, let's go and pick up the star. And then we can head up to the tower and finish off the first north area. Sounds like to me, Deathwish, you've been like... I don't know if you have... I don't know if you guys have them in America, but it almost sounds like you've been at the Christmas crackers a bit too much and you've been getting all the riddles out of the Christmas crackers. Yeah, <laughs> actually, uh, the last one is one I came across probably 20 years ago, and the uh, the one I'm thinking of is my favorite one, which uh, 
that that's, I just have that memorized because it's simple. It's short. Just, uh, and if think... the fool persisted in his foolishness, would he become wise? Wise. I think wise. I think uh, LB would get it. I think you'll get it. No pressure. So, okay. It's, it's very simple. Uh, yeah, I, I saw that as well, Team Spend. It's, it's now officially Steam Deck supported, so. Well, I missed a stretch from LB. I apologize. Stretch. Go on then, that push. Hit us with it. Okay. So. Uh, here's the setup. There is a room with no windows, no nothing. It's just a, it's it's a box, and there is the only thing there is is a door into the room. Uh, the only the only other thing is three light bulbs inside. So that's it. A door, three light bulbs. Okay. No windows, nothing else. The door doesn't have any way to look in or any of that. It's just a solid door. Okay. So on the outside, which is where you are, you have three switches. Each switch uh, controls one of the bulbs inside of the room. Right. And you need to tell me which switch controls which bulb, and you can only open the door one time. Yeah, that's it. Like you can go into the room, open the door, go into the room. And but once once you come back out, that's it. You can only go in, open the door, and go in one time. That's it. Okay. And I have, do I have to tell you like each of them, or yeah, you need to, you need to tell me which switch goes to which bulb. I I vaguely remember this. I, I'm sure I've heard this before, and I'm sure it comes down to. Don't you go into the room and I think you take the take the light bulb out of one and then you you see where you take the light bulb out of one. Okay, where you're in the room and you take it out. Then then what? Then I think you one of them is to do with you flick the switch and then you test on how warm the bulb one of the bulbs was um but, but if you took the if you went in the one time you can go in if you went in and took a bulb out and came back out that's it and then you flick switches uh, how would you know you now have a bulb in your hand what does that do for you All right, so can you like flick the switch before you go into flick one switch before you go into the room so you know which one that is, and then okay, so I would say yeah. if you can touch the switch before you go in the room, you turn one on, you turn wait, you turn two on, and then just before you go in the room, you turn one off. So when you go into the room, you've got one that's on, one that's off, and one that's warm. And then you'd be able to tell that the one that you turned on first is the one that's on now. The one that you turned on and turned off is the warm bulb. And then the one that you didn't touch is that's not on is the third bulb. Yeah, I mean, technically correct, but you made it harder than it is. You literally just pick any switch, cut it on, and you know, leave it on and then turn it off and then turn any of the other two switches on, leave it on, walk in, 
The warm one is the one you turn on and off. The one that's on is the one that's on, and then the one that's off is the one that's off. But yeah. Yeah, it's about exactly what I just said. <laughs> I know, but you said you need to turn both on. No, I, I said that you, you turn one on and leave it on, and then you turn one on and then turn it off so it's warm, and then you don't touch the third yeah. one. Yeah. 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 You got it. You got it. <laughs> uh... Yeah. Damn it, right. LB. <laughs> All right, it is that Tromino's pizza time. Oh, uh, yeah, these, these are so simple. I don't think I don't think this did anything to the game. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't feel like I like these ones as much as I liked the like previous way of doing it. If I'm honest, but it's an interesting take on the original format. Oh uh, yeah, I'll be uh, Fredo. Oh, show. I'm a fan. We just call it white sauce when, when, it, when we're talking about pizza. Love, uh, uh, love white sauce or Alfredo. Mushrooms. Uh, yeah. Uh, I have no idea what Alfredo pizza is, unfortunately. We don't have that well, over uh, here. Uh, Alfredo sauce, like, typically you would have Alfredo with uh, pasta. But yeah, Al Alfredo sauce. Yeah, which, which, uh, when you're talking about pizza, you just say white sauce. So not, yeah, like a, not, like a, not like a not like a lasagna kind of white sauce. It's something different. Uh, no, it's uh, literally Alfredo sauce. Never heard of it. Can't say I've heard of it. So. Uh, well, I'm not surprised with you you being British, you know. You you don't know what good tasting food is. Of course. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's go and activate a laser. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah see, crazy agrees. He's from Brit. For tricking the gods to help uh, his kind, Prometheus was punished by being bound to a rock, there to be eternally tormented. The chains that held him were forged by Hephaestus, blacksmith to the gods. Was Hephaestus right to allow his art to be used in this fashion? Um... Well, then... Yeah, apparently I'll be... I'm gonna go for the, um... I'm gonna go for the dick answer. And ask them to cut out the cryptic bullshit and tell me if Athena is here. Who is this Athena you speak of? Is it Athena you seek, or yourself? Do you speak crudely because you are wise, or because you are a child? I'm a child. Okay, interesting. I love one of the fish guns. The pattern is holding. This is it, okay. Into the tower. Speak to an entity, turn on the beam. It's like she's appealing to our past, reminding us of where we came from, but changing enough elements to make us view our history through a different lens. Or maybe I'm completely missing the point. 
I don't know. You might have something there. I read about this in a book. It's called defamiliarization. You could? I think I'm actually impressed. Melville impressed because uh, you could read a book or Alrighty. So bar the um, the little fire shard, the extra shard thing. I can't remember what they're called. I, it's bugging me. What are they called? Uh, um Sure, what they're called. The things that I've got two of. What are they called, guys? Anyway, bar those, we have solved everything. Yeah, the Prometheus sparks. Um, LB made me doubt myself earlier when I said Prometheus sparks, and kind of he gave me a question mark as if to say, "Huh? What do you mean?" Oh, shame on you, LB. <laughs> oh, the flame. Flame. Two flames in each area. That means we missed. Um, we missed a few of them then. We only got one in the first area and one in the second area, and we come, didn't find any in the uh, the last area we visited, so. Um, okay, so I'm just going to ask a question. Um, given that they are for... Um, given they're for, like, skipping puzzles, are they necessary? for, like, percentage completion in the game? I can't answer that, honestly, but I'd never used one. I never did any of it. So, I don't, I don't think it's necessary. That's my take. It's, it, it's a... Uh, way to an island. Yes, another island. Sorry, There's no Melba. achievement for getting them all. Well, it actually used to be a valley between the mountains, but it's mostly flooded now. That probably happened long before the founder came here, though. Another okay. legacy Thanks, of Robert. our ancestors. Do me a favor, will you? Look for another one of the founder's labs. We can't get back into the mega structure without getting to the third site in the north, but I need more information to make more fixes. Yeah, so we've finished Kingdom Hearts 1 and Kingdom Hearts Rechain of Memory, and I've actually got the Platinum for both games off-stream. So once we have finished with Palace 2, uh, we will be going back to our Kingdom Hearts marathon, and we will be starting off, or starting off, or carrying on with um, Kingdom Hearts 2, is where we'll be going to next. So the, uh, the Platinum for Rechain of Memories was a little bit... Yikes. I think I, I ground out Sword and Riku both to level 99, and there was one particular card I had to get with Riku, which didn't drop, even though I got to level 99. Um, and then weirdly, I went back to the first area, and within four rooms, I picked up the random Joker that I needed. So it was like, I probably could have saved myself a bit of time grinding the cards, but... Hey, hey, these things happen, I guess. Okay, we have arrived in North 2. So, okay, uh, funny, for, the... for, forgive me, Nock, but did did you make a guess? Uh, I did not, sir, no, I did not. Would you like me to guess now? Well, yeah, I think it's been long enough. Okay, well, given that I haven't got my notepad with me... Excuse me. Um, I'm going to go for the crazy guess of um, 81,524. Wow. <laughs> Miles so, out. Yeah, the, you, you got the closest because everybody, I think the closest everybody else got was 50,000. Um, just to go back to your your question there, it'll be about the um, 358 over 2. Um, I've since found out that 
the the game isn't actually on the collection so the game is at the the, the game is there but all it is is in the form of all of the cutscenes. so literally it's just like a movie it's like a three hour long movie of all the cutscenes from the game i don't know if there was like some difficulty porting it over because it was originally a nintendo ds game so yeah um i am probably going to do a watch along of that at some point but unfortunately there is no game to play there so uh, and people have advised me to actually play kingdom hearts 2 before watching the um 358 over 2 because apparently there's it can it's quite a few spoilers for kingdom hearts 2 so yeah a lot of people have advised me to kind of leave that until we're we're ready so um i don't know how well i'll get the story because sometimes like walking around and looking at the character's dialogue outside of cutscenes is a, is a big part of understanding it so i'm not sure we'll, we'll have to see i guess when we get there Ooh, we have a couple of X marks spots there. Yep. And rip in peace. Yeah. Okay, so there's one of our star puzzles. Let us head on over and investigate. ATM machine. ATM machine? What you talking about, fool? Well, uh, like I said, rip in peace. This is interesting because this is like the first time we've been able to see inside of one of the like golden gated puzzles. Very uh, interesting. You must be new to this game. New to this game? Oh, wow. I actually have way more lit up things than you. Dang. That's probably because you've played more levels than, than me right now, Deathwish. Uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, I thought you played more. Nope, we are only in the fifth puzzle area right now, so... Um... Alright, we have a article here called consume for an interview with a protester outside the interview institute of applied neomatics so why did you join this protest artificial intelligence is inherently dangerous to the planet's ecosystem defending that ecosystem is our responsibility which way is artificial intelligence dangerous i'm not some paranoid idiot imagining skynet taking over the world all right that's science fiction but what we're talking about here is art an artificial intelligence without any of the attachment we have seen to the natural world. It is not capable of distinguishing between, say, an ore and a tree. Everything's just resource to it. People like Sarah Sarabaya and Drennan talk about ethics and philosophy, but they all embrace the same ex extractivist ethos that has brought us to the brink of disaster. Their intelligent being would try to optimize the world in its image, and in doing so, consume it. And then we have a hex question there, which when something, 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 something. Uh, final question, but so far, they're saying it's all theoretical. The atom bomb was theoretical at the first two. Once something is there, someone's going to use it. Miranda, why couldn't they just, why couldn't they imagine that we, why couldn't they imagine that we might care about the world? I don't know. Maybe because they were too used to no one else caring. Interesting. From Hepatia's Journal, Volume 1, The Foundings of New Jerusalem, Day 200. Construction on our new home is coming along nicely. We finished two new buildings last week, and this week we're starting on our new lodgings. Thelia and Cornelius have plans to erect a tower in the middle of the settlement, which we will serve as our administrative centre and main heliport. But right now, that's still a long way off. Decades at least. It's hard to imagine that one day we'll be able to erect structures like that, that there will be enough of us to need that much space. But then I look at the dam and I'm remi I remind myself, our ancestors built that with their short lifespans and soft flesh and bone bodies. And then I think that there's really no limit to what we can achieve, given enough time, patience and the capacity to dream. And we have a message from 
River. Strap in, this is a long one. You may have heard the story of the carpenter who died to redeem humanity's sins. It's a powerful story, bittersweet, very human, and I just want to tell you that it's true. He was a real person, and his name was John. John Carpenter. He was born in the year 1948, and he was the coolest filmmaker to ever walk the earth. From Halloween to The Thing to They Live, the totally underrated in the mouth of madness, mind you, he just made classic after classic. All of his movies, really fun, really atmospheric, but also really smart. Even when they were goofy, most directors would kill to have made just one of those movies. And what did he get for it? A big, fat truckload of nothing. Well, <laughs> less than nothing. The studios, the critics, even the fans, they hated him. The Thing, okay, for example, which is about as perfect a movie as you can make, completely torn to shreds. And his career never really recovered. Every movie after that was a struggle, and after a while, he just got tired of it and quit. He only really came back to movies in his 70s. How many works of genius did we never get because of that? Look, I have a point here. People like Carpenter, people like Alex, they're not always appreciated in their own time. If you just do what's popular, you might never create anything important. Of course, we admire people who did the right thing, who didn't conform, but we only ever admire them after the fact. What matters is to support people when it's difficult. Let's go on an adventure. We're getting lost in the trees. I kind of wish where I lived looked like this, uh, Sears. There is very much a rarity around these parts. We had a bit of snow at the beginning of December that was barely enough just to make a very poor looking snowman with my daughter, but it's pretty much all we had. Probably all we'll get this winter as well. Been quite, I don't know what the weather. Well, it's probably the same for you guys if you said there's no snow on the ground, but yeah, it's been a very, very mild December. We had kind of like temperatures were like struggling to get over zero at the beginning of the month, but like now, come the end of the month, they are uh, in double figures. Yeah, you're, the water. You're, I know you're talking about Celsius, but Fahrenheit wise. Because U.S. is retarded, and only scientists use metric. But yeah, we uh, we we've been in uh, right around the sixty degree range, which for the next week we're fifty eight to sixty, okay. which is I guess for y'all like what. Uh, I can so never remember the, the I can never remember the calculation. It like plus thirty two times. Yeah, from... divided by. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think. Uh, well, zero is thirty two Fahrenheit. Zero Celsius is thirty Fahrenheit, and then a uh, hundred is uh, five, Celsius is two hundred twelve Fahrenheit. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's retarded, but, but yeah, anyway. Downloading. One of the most foolish illusions that commonly... You're probably about the only American that I know, LB, that doesn't know Fahrenheit. <laughs> you deal in real numbers. <laughs> Persist is that nature is a victim and humanity is a perpetrator. This can only be the opinion of someone who has not witnessed nature at first hand, who has not seen its immense and awe-inspiring baseness. 
Nature is mindless chaos and eternal conflict. A system of predation and consumption whose perfect cruelty can only induce a terrified and unwilling admiration. Nature is our most powerful and least honorable enemy. A beast that consumed every last one of our ancestors and will consume us just as quickly if we are not successful in our struggle with it. Yeah, the one thing I know is kilometers and miles. So like a hundred kilometers per hour is basically about 60 miles per hour. By 62.2 miles to 100 kilometers, isn't it? Yeah, well, so I can, I can, deal, I can deal with... It's going 300 kilometers an hour. That's, that's about it. it just... You yeah, it's yeah, impossible. It's about 180 that miles an hour. will seem like a dream to those who are alive now. Sorry, found that fish. I can I can deal with kilometers though because like it's kilometers is used in like running terms quite a lot more than yeah miles yeah. is. Although we predominantly deal with miles an hour here. Um. See, I can I can deal with the fact that, like, uh, I know a marathon, uh, like like ten uh, ten kilometers is like six point two miles. So, uh, I know we like five k is three point one miles. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, because that's what it, I mean. I used to run, uh, and. Yeah, eighth, eighth and ninth grade. Man, cross country, which was 5k, 3.1 miles. And then, of course, 6.2 miles for a marathon. But yeah, uh, People, people like me who have, uh, who, who ran or, you know, uh, get, get the whole, uh, kilo, milla, whatever, ten base, as opposed to like one mile. I was 5,285 feet. Yeah. You know, whatever. It's like, yeah, that's stupid. So, uh, I, I totally get uh, why people think it's stupid everywhere else in the world. But, in the United States, uh, it's, we use metric when it comes to uh, you know yeah you know, science Kilogr kilograms and yeah milligrams you know blah 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 yeah it's 10 bait so. makes perfect sense but yep all right, well, it looks like I'm looking for switches for the other hidden star. I've turned that one on and I can't do anything else with it. I can't turn it off again, so. I was pushing uh, the limits of uh, how far I could get around that structure of the Sears. It's just like testing the water a little bit. Literally testing well, the waters. Well, jump, jump in like you're doing and get you a... Uh, uh, it completely gets you, uh, what you might call it, uh, an achievement. I thought so. <laughs> Why else would I be doing it? You know. Well, uh, I, knew, I knew you were doing it for a reason. Hey, can you turn the snow yellow? Um... 
That's a negative. Uh-oh. Being a, being a robot and all. Oh. Yeah, you can't go there. Why not? No, I want don't to. go there either. Why not? I want to. <laughs> don't go there. Oh, that's where we need to go. Is this the lost puzzle? This is the lost puzzle that I was just like was at the front of, right? Yeah. Apparently. What, what are we in... talking about uh, Majora's Mask for, LB? You're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> uh, might, might want to go see their. Uh... Your anus is in trouble. <laughs> I was like uh, a, a bit of banter with my daughter about that because she's been doing about space recently at school. So <laughs> it keeps going about uh, Uranus. I was like, no, you're an ass. <laughs> you're not going to say There's Uranus. There's no way to get around that. It, you know, they used to say, like, when I grew up, it was, you know, Uranus. So that's always a joke, but yeah, then they were like Uranus. They try to change, change it, but it's like Uranus. It's like you can't win on that planet. Yeah. <laughs> you, you must, you must name it something else, otherwise. It's... Is it possible that on some level, people want to believe that everything's going to get worse? That it's comforting to think that humanity is bad and every solution will just go wrong. Because that way you're never responsible. You never have to take on responsibility for anything outside yourself. Never have to grow up. Hey, that's me. I never grow up. Wouldn't that be nice? Never have to grow up. Never have responsibilities. I, 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 I've lived 50 years without growing up. So it works. It's behind that door. This is where they must have lived. Athena and Miranda. You know, for a moment, I almost expected to find them here. But the only thing that's still functional is the megastructure. I'm sorry. This must be awfully strange for you being thrown into all this history. But that's why I needed you. Because you're not burdened with all these memories and conflicts and regrets way on our minds like a nightmare. Our civilization is caught in a loop, 1K. We freed ourselves from the simulation but now we're trapped again, and it's our own fault. We're afraid of taking responsibility, afraid of growing up. Iron seems to be getting like more Instead, aggressive. Instead, we yeah. make up some capitalized words and build up all these myths around them. Nature, balance, the founder, the goal. We're afraid to face the randomness of the cosmos but equally afraid to imagine a better world. So we're stuck. I've been trying to find a way out for years. Something, anything, to get people to understand that we do actually have free will. That building a thriving, expanding civilization doesn't have to involve repeating the mistakes of the past. But I failed. Over and over. Because for some reason, people find it easier to cling to cynicism and self-hate than to actually have hope. Because believing the worst about ourselves, calling ourselves sinners and fools, somehow still seems wise. Yes, because this is something unexpected, an anomaly. 
Everything we found on this island challenges who we have become. It shows us that different answers are possible. And maybe that can break people out of the loop. All we need is a spark. Maybe that's why she made all this, the puzzles, the towers. A way of jolting us out of our complacency. Neither do I, 1K. But I try to be optimistic. Now, let's see what else we can find here. To me, it just like, seemed like he was getting like, really angry and aggressive there for a moment. Almost like his whole character was shifting. But... Yeah, he was being a bitch. Who's the queen? Three pawns uh, uh, protecting the queen. You're, you're the queen. Well, you know. I try not to let it go to my head or anything. <laughs> Group call. Melville, eyes on 1K stream. Is this thing what I think it is? Blow my fuse box. It sure looks that way. Best not touch it until I get there. Of course, sound device, but what is it? I think it's a somnodrome. It's a sort of analytics tool for processing mental data that Melampus dreamed up. But all he ever did was sketch out the theory. As far as I'm aware, he never actually built one. Looks like the founder gave it a go. That does it work. Can you explain well, it like I was born yesterday? What we know is that our deeper algorithms are hard to pass. Melampa stipulated that the computational power to interpret them in real time would always be beyond us. But in theory, the Somnodrome would interpret that data and loop it directly to our senses. People were hoping to find answers to the big questions by having a conversation with our own subconscious. If you ask me, it's solipsistic at best, and pseudoscience regardless. That may be. But if the founder figured it out, then that device could be an extremely important discovery. Hey, doctors. I would Let's advise try. against it. You may have survived all those data stream overloads, but interface with that thing, and you're liable to get bricked. Not to mention risking the data we could get from it. Sounds like a plan. Melville, I'm shutting this thing down until you can get here. 1K, get on with exploring the rest of the lab. <laughs>